Hi, this is Kimberly. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit. We have finally reached the end of Day 4 testimony in the May 2019 trial of Chris McNabb and Courtney Bell, and it only took 12 parts. If you are unfamiliar with Chris and Courtney, they are the kissing cousins from Georgia on trial in the October 8, 2017 death of their 15-day-old baby, Kalia Claire McNabb. They were meth addicted back then, but they've been in jail long enough at this point to dry out and put on some weight. During this last part of Day 4 testimony, everyone on the jury has a splitting headache, and they are dying for an adult beverage, and they just want to go home, damn it. But the judge decides they're going to finish the testimony of lead investigator of the Newton County Sheriff's Office, Jeff Alexander so he can finally get off that blooming, bloody, blasted witness stand, even though they are going to run a bit late. I feel like the judge feels like Mr. A is much too important to have to come by and testify again on Monday, but he tells the jurors they are important too. But their place of hierarchy is like when you call a business to complain. It's like that, and you get that automated voice that says, your call is important to us. Please enjoy this 40-minute flute solo. Like that. That's how important they are. I have a feeling that some of the jurors check liver light may come on this weekend once they get released. What is it the jurors get paid a day? Isn't it $25? Well, let me look it up. Yep. Here it is, juror compensation in Newton County, Georgia. Jurors are paid daily expenses. Jurors are paid $25 a day per day for service. Well, shit in a bucket. That equates to less than minimum wage and pretty much slave labor. Oh, but it's a duty and you're supposed to do it anyway. You know, it's it's... It's your duty in exchange for living in a free country. But it's Friday afternoon, and the poor jurors, they just want to bolt out of there. We can't see them, but I can feel them getting restless and starting to fall out all over the place. And the tension headaches, I can feel that too. And that vague little hungry feeling, you know, that hangry thing. And the Snickers bar is not going to fix this one. I'm starting to think that I'm an empath. And to those of you that have asked, no, I am not slurring my speech. I'm talking in cursive, damn it. So fucking disrespectful. Anyway, Mr. A finally loses his shit. I figured it would happen sooner or later, but he lost his shit on Courtney. Why didn't he lose it on Christian Shit 2.0? He's a damn punk. But, no, he lost his shit on Courtney because he's up there on a Sunday at work instead of watching football and eating nachos and having beer spew out of his nose. But Courtney finally drags her ass up there at the sheriff's office to be interviewed and Mr. A is like me and that we can't stand liar pants or liar pantses. That doesn't sound right. Pantses? People who have an aversion to the truth. I'm wondering why he didn't go off on Chris in the same way. I think it was because mothers are held to impossibly high standards that dads aren't when it comes to children. Just like the way Chris OG, you know, the original Chris and shit, was congratulated for the way he was with Bella and Cece. Shanann was criticized and still is to this day for the slightest thing. Well, in this video, while Courtney's being interviewed, I do like that we can see their faces. It's just an audio, not the video where they just show us that horrible, blue, bad quality, boring, you know, of them sitting in the interrogation room. No, we get to see their facial expressions as the interview goes on, and or rather, Courtney being scolded and chewed out and getting balled out in the monishment lecture and all that shit by Mr. A. It makes me wonder what secrets lie in Mr. A's personal history. 
Does he have mommy issues or something, I wonder? Does he have an ex-wife that just pisses him off? Just a little thinking out loud. Because he got brutal with her, you'll see. Me, for fuck's sake, he was smoking meth just like Courtney was smoking meth. Talking about Chris meth lab, of course. And doing it with children in the house just like she was smoking meth with children in the house. And besides that, he was the hitter and she was the hittee. Why did he choose to go screaming at Courtney when he didn't do it to Chris? I don't get it. It's a goddamn double standard. That's what the fuck it is. Fuck that shit. Damn male chauvinist. Day four was one long ass day. I sympathize with those members of the jury. I really do. So during this video, pay attention to the facial expressions of Tweedledee and Tweedle Dumbass while the interview is being played for the courtroom. Chris 2.0, his face is very telling, even covered with all that graffiti. But you can tell they've been advised by counsel to sit still and be expressionless. Chris looks like he has one nerve left, and Mr. A is dry humping it when he questions Courtney about her new beau. Chris McNapp's attorney, Anthony Carter, said in his opening statements that his client's face tattoos, as well as his history of violence against Courtney and the couple's drug use, led investigators to label him a killer. They were kind of prejudiced against him. And, well, and the baby goes missing and turns up dead, what else are they supposed to think? That's what most would think, but... It's not throwing someone under the bus if they were already tumbling precariously in that direction all on their own, now is it? Now, something happens in this video that happened in another video several episodes back. The really good, clean video will break away to another one that is not-so-clean footage with the not-so-clean sound. It'll have the loud courtroom noises and stuff. And this is where the little man has picked up where Big Man failed. Meaning, the major network dropped the ball and missed about 30 minutes of courtroom time. But the small town local newspaper was there, and while it's not the best of quality, at least we didn't miss out. I did cut out a lot of the dead air where Courtney was just boo-hooing and snorting and blowing her wet snot. Ugh, it was fucking disgusting. But... No, she wasn't blowing her wet snot. I take that back. She needed to blow her goddamn nose, and she didn't. Wanted to slap her across her cheeky little face. She did what rude kids do, and that's just keep snorting it up. <laughs> like that in their sinuses and grossing everyone out, only it sounds all wet and shit. I didn't want y'all to get bored and squeamish and therefore leave the video, so I cut a lot of that out. You're welcome. Just know that it's there, and I did my best in eliminating as much as possible, but be sure to stick around towards close to the end of this video. I will show some photos that Courtney posted to her Facebook just about five weeks after all of this happened. You know, after baby Clea had been discovered in the woods deceased and the love of her life chris and shit 2.0 was sitting in jail and she found a new boyfriend and yeah mr a calls her out and questions her about all of this stuff and well it's not a bunch of photos i made it sound like a bunch of photos it's only two but they're good you'll see mr a just flips his fucking lid when summoned by Mr. A for not disclosing in her first interview before Clea was found deceased in the woods, Courtney withheld the fact that she and Chris were current meth users and that he beat the shit out of her on a regular basis. She sounds like she's 14 years old when she whines, but everything else I told the truth about. And I don't mean to imply that she's a liar, but I have the uncanny ability to know bullshit when I hear it. Bullshit, Courtney. She's a hard one to figure out. I don't know if she killed Kalia or if she is just special, 
from years and years of poisoning her young body with cigarettes, meth, and God knows what else. She had just given birth and she was smoking meth, getting into physical altercations with both Chris and one of the girls, at least one of the girls he had sex with, smoking cigarettes and no telling what else. Talk about abusing your body. I shudder to think what she did to her body and to Kalia's developing fetus body, to that poor baby's brain, lungs, heart, nervous system. Do they not drug test these babies that seem to be in a suspicious and precarious situation when they're born? Maybe C&C, Chris and Courtney, C&C for short, fooled the nurses, because, you know, they had that great interest that they took in the swaddling technique. That could have fooled the nurses into thinking that they were eager parents or something. Good God Almighty, Mr. A, did they appear to be eager parents or something? But, Courtney, it did not matter what you did. Chris was not going to stop being a piece of shit. Within the span of two weeks, she had her pregnant ass beaten and pushed to the ground, given birth, gotten into a physical fight down at the shoe store with one of the girls he was sleeping with, had sex and no telling what else, with him, for him, for his scrawny chicken shit, piece of cat piss excrement. But he was on his way to see somebody else while he was supposed to be looking for Kalia. He mentioned in one of these interviews that he was going to this girl's house. And why the fuck would you do that? Unless you thought that for some dumbass reason that maybe the baby might be there since you didn't find her in the woods or under the porch or under the trailer. Well, while he was there, you might as well get laid. I'm sick of the way he was trying to make it seem like Courtney was the problem in their relationship. That she should just go and be with the children and stop chasing him around, trying to make sure he didn't have sex with anyone else. Yes, my commenter said in the last video, he'll call you when he needs a ride home, Courtney. And I wonder if she thought he wouldn't go and be with anybody else because she had sex with him within a few days of giving birth. And I remember how that shit felt the first time or two after having a baby. Made me want to say, that's the last damn baby we'll ever have. It, if I recall correctly, it felt something like coarse sandpaper on, well, down there. It, that area that was still all bristled and and beaten and raw and sore and that had just been turned inside out and set on fire. Yeah, baby, I'm so horny. Just can't wait to do it. Couple of weeks later, my ass. Fuck that shit. Fuck it at six weeks. I told my husband, the doctor said six months, and he was like, nah, I was standing there, and she said six weeks. I was like, that bitch. But, you know, this shit, this, all of this shit is exactly why Tim Bell, Courtney's loving father, all of this is why he was so damn exasperated with Chris and shit 2.0. I really doubt it has anything to do with them being husband or cousins. I was going to say husbands. Well, who knows in that family, but I really doubt it has anything to do with them being cousins, but I'm sure that was icing on the fucking cake. But it's because Tim was just tired of Chris's shit and the way his beloved daughter was being treated by him. He didn't deserve her, you know? That was Tim's little princess that he had raised from birth because her mama's a goddamn hoe. But didn't, hey, didn't Chris that threaten to beat Tim's ass next time he saw him on his own turf? Well, so why did he go running up the hill when he came to take Courtney's car back? Because he's a whiny little bitch. That's why. There's just something about that name Chris and shit. They are all dumb, stupid, simple and thick. The original Chris and shit Watts, if he had talked more and added, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, to the end of every other sentence, maybe he wouldn't have folded so fast. He could have kept talking and talking, like Chris 2.0 did. 
but O.G. is frightened of women. I was scared. Shanann scared me. I was scared. He probably would have strangled Tammy, too, if she had gone to sleep after being up early the day before and getting home in the middle of the night after a delayed flight and Coder had left the interrogation room. Yeah, he'd have been like, yeah, I'm going to strangle Tammy, too. And just a little mini complaint before I go. You know how people say, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall? Well, basically, I was. With these interviews, that weird angle we had in the interrogation room, and it was like being a fly on the wall, and now I want to bitch about it. I want high-definition video and surround sound, and what a labor of love this has been transcribing these interviews and stuff and damn it took a long time i didn't realize what kind of a project i was taking on but knock off the bullshit kimberly who are you kidding this has been a giant pain in the ass labor of love my ass fuck that have you ever had one of those days where literally everything pisses you off someone could be like look at that rainbow and I'd be like, fuck all that shit. That's how I feel today. So, before we get started, and if y'all wonder why it takes me so long to get these videos out, it's because a lot of research goes into it. I am scouring the rabbit hole, looking for stuff to go along with the story, just to help make sense of it all. And then the dad blame subtitles. Just saying. I know most of y'all understand me, those of you that have been here a while and know me. I mean, I know sometimes I'm difficult and stubborn and shit, but you have to admit, I'm totally worth it. Yeah, I bitch and carry on a lot. Not to mention this time of year and the weather that comes with it is very hard on me physically. And I have ADD and yada 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 and so on and so forth and what have you. But I've also been busy being a really awesome hermit. So thanks for being here today. I do anticipate you will take pleasure in today's episode 24 of As the Mobile Home Park Wheels Turn. Much love and peace. Thank you for listening. You know, when you're leaving the intersection right here, and you're going around the big curve to like go toward Congress. When you're going around the curve, as soon as you get around it, there's a church right here. And you have to cross railroad tracks. She's buried in the back of the church. And then he has two burial plots. She didn't even look the same. It's hard to accept that that was even my baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going through it. This is the worst time of my life. I just don't know how to get through. So how was, how was trying to run away from self-medicate worked out? Not very well. I don't know. <clears throat> but I've realized that last week. I don't know why or how, but I ain't even had a taste for drugs. Mm -hmm. I just want help. Have you learned anything else since the last time we talked about this whole thing? I've been searching for answers every fucking day mm. with, with people that he knew mm. and people that he said he didn't know and that he had just met. And, you know, I've heard all kind of fucking things, but I don't know what to believe that. Mm. I don't know what to talk about. Right. Tell me about this girl that you talked to at this party or whatever. The Christie girl? Yeah. It wasn't a party, it was a house that I went to. Okay. She goes, I'm gonna go to, we were all sitting in a room, she's sitting on the bed, I'm sitting on the ottoman. 
She said, I'm gonna go to this house and get my purse. I think you need to go with me. I said, what do you mean I need to go with you? I don't even know you. I don't really leave Josh here because he don't even know these people. She goes, no, you need to come with me. I said, why is that? So she gets up close to me and she whispers in my ear, I know who killed your baby. So I get up, I grab my stuff and I walk to the car with her. We get in the car, she says, Shane Kidd killed your baby. Shane Kidd killed your baby. So did she say why? Um, she said that there was a very important, dangerous person that had sent him to hit a legal Chris.
you guys got her. I was there with her too. Mm -hmm. She stayed two nights without us. Okay. She stayed last when this happened. Mm -hmm. So that's two of the 15 days. Or actually four of them because she, she was in the hospital for four days, right? And not because of anything, she was just My dad had her about three or four days. Okay, so that's seven. Right, so I had her about a week. How many days did Missy have her before? Megan. I mean, Megan. Um, one. Okay. So I'm right, so about five days. Now, I'm not a mother. I never get to a fault. child. I was well, trying. Was it or was it not your fault? Because you know you've admitted to drug use in the home. In the home. But I was it's, a good mama. The, the house was not in good shape. I was trying the best okay. that I could. You, your relationship with the child's father was tumultuous. You know what that means? It was, it was violent. But when it was good, it was good. Yeah, but most of the time it wasn't. By your own admission, he was running off all yeah. the time. I'm talking the end. Is, we're talking about a 15 day span. No, I'm talking about the last two or three months. Okay. <laughs> Before that, it wasn't as bad as it was. Hmm. But I didn't know how to leave him. I wanted my girls to have their daddy. Hmm. He never showed fucking any kind of violence toward our kid or kids. How many times did he hit you? In what, the four years that you and he have been in a relationship? How many times did he hit you when you were pregnant with that child? Yeah. How many times did he encourage you to do drugs when you were pregnant with that child? kick him out? Call the police on him. How many times did you lie for him? How many times did you sit in this room right here and lie <laughs> about him? And then when y'all found my baby. Mm -hmm. It took that. It took us finding your murdered child for you to finally start For, for me to admit that, that I, I used drugs and that he fucking hit me. Mm -hmm. But everything else I told the truth about. But the day before when we talked about it, when we were looking for your child, you lied about it. You told some it, story about you no. getting some fight with some chick. All this other and stuff. And the chick was real. Well. And you don't understand how we can put these charges. Well, we can put these charges on you because the law allows us to. That's the way the law is. I didn't do this and I didn't know about it. But we can prove by your very own admission that you have some culpability in the deprivation of that child, okay, in the cruelty and the, the environment that both of those kids were in. What do you mean? Just what I said. There was violence in the home, there was drugs in the home, you know, neither of y'all worked. He worked. Not according to his dad, he didn't. He worked. He didn't work very often. Um, the, the last two weeks was, was pretty fucking rough, but mm -hmm. other than that, he worked every fucking week. Mm -hmm. Whether it was five days or three days or two, but mm -hmm. he worked. I work every day. Today's Sunday, I'm working. I understand. Okay. I never said that he was perfect. You don't take my money. Dad, and buy drugs with it instead of food and stuff for the kids that he's so in love with. I understand. But I was trying. I was almost to the point where I was ready to leave him, but mm -hmm. I didn't know how. I just wanted my girls to have a family. How many times did he have to beat you before it was time for you to go? Did he have to kill you? I thought it was going to be me.
But I was trying. I loved our paintings. Well, who does? And you know who does? Did see this coming? My dad. Your dad and grandparents. <laughs> Actually, what they saw coming was you in the grave. Me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How much drugs did you do when you were pregnant with Khalid? Not many. How much? How often did you smoke mar marijuana? Uh, throughout all the breaks, because I stay sick. So marijuana was your choice to keep you from being sick? What? Is what kept me able to eat. Mm. What about the meth? How much meth did you do? How many times? Maybe ten. Uh, and I'm gonna, the reason I'm asking you this, Courtney, is so you will understand how we can make these charges against you. But I don't deserve to be charged with murder. You're being charged with murder in the second degree. What is that? Which, which I know it sounds like a bunch of smoke, but that's. There's a difference in the law. Well, then what is the difference? It's because of your actions allowed this to happen. My actions did not allow this. Did you take the kids and leave? This yeah. Guy that was yeah. I went. I went Thursday. Mm -hmm. I went to my dad's. Mm -hmm. I got the and kids. I was going to stay there with them. Why didn't you? Because he talked me back into coming home. Mm -hmm. How did he? What did he do to talk you back into coming home? What do you mean? He begged me to bring his, his babies home to and his kids home. He begged me to come home. Are both of these children even his? Yeah, both of them's his. There's no other fucking option. There, there's, there's no other person. You never unfaithful during your relationship no. with him? Not at all. <laughs> Were y'all legally married? We were married. Okay. <clears throat> so with the charges that I have, mm -hmm. how long is that? How long? You mean like prison time? Yeah. I have no idea. I don't, I don't deal in They've got to be proven and you've got to be found guilty before you even worry about that. That's something to talk with your attorney about. Okay. They have to contact you at all? Well, yeah. I wouldn't be able to, would they? Uh, they have the mail address that my dad's. Mm -hmm. My dad hasn't told me anything's came from me. He probably had to be spending holidays and stuff. <laughs> How'd you get hooked up with Hubby? Um, How long have you known him? McKeel. Who? McGill. McGill? Who's that? They said his Rock Dell said his real name's Joe Stroud. Okay. Um, he took me over there. And um, maybe a week. So you haven't known him all that long. Got a school friend from high school or nothing like that. Yeah. I was staying from place to place. And I was searching for answers. Chris talked about Hubby. Mm -hmm. Hubby says he didn't know him. Hubby said he never met him. Mm -hmm. But Skittles, the girl that he says he was standing in the driveway that morning, Chris, when he was supposed to have been in the woods. Skittles? Yes, Sarah Collins. Um, her and hubby was like together off and on. Um, I don't know. I just I, 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 when I met him and figured out that he was hubby, I don't know. I just went to him for answers. Answer kind of what? Answer. Nobody 
understands the pain I have in my fucking heart. I don't. You're right, I don't. You remember anything else about that night that I that you haven't told me? Anything at all? Any detail, whether minor or not? Go through it again. Say things like just this picture. And it's difficult for people to feel sorry for you. Can you understand that? People see me and, and feel the same way. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of myself, I dress like that every day. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know that. I mean, I've seen. I mean, I can tell you, I don't care. You're going to see me. I'm going to say, Dad, I'm going to cry 10 fucking times over this shit. 
And it's so great Christmas, and it's so great Halloween, and it's so great Thanksgiving, and it's so great nothing because I didn't have my babies. It wasn't a holiday. Is your nose in there? We'll go ahead and stop for right now. Is it possible for me to go to rehab? That's something that I don't deal with either. Page 27 of the transcript, 
he was talk, speaking to her in the present tense. Is that fair? I'm sorry, yes. In fact, he was talking, speaking of her in the future tense, that her hair is going to be a certain way. I'm not a grammar teacher, but I assume so, yes. Um, now, you said we would never have searched that area if Mr. McNabb had not run down that path at home while he was taking us on. Is that right? Yes. But the dogs, all the dogs, pretty much ran. You can kind of track them down on that path. I don't know where the other dogs went. You were there when all the dogs came out. I was not. Um, so you would have searched that path even if he had to run out there because the dogs ran out. I would assume so, yes. And you've heard lots of, you've been here this week, you've heard lots of people talking about how the scent that the dogs follow needs to be pristine, uh, otherwise you get contaminants and they can chase the wrong lead. Is that fair? I, I, would, I, I would, even, would be willing to make a statement. I don't really know any, I don't have any experience with canine and dogs. Okay. So you wouldn't know the evidence was the last person to put Khalid into that sleeper was Christopher McNabb, is that right? I believe so, yes. So, do you not think it possible that those dogs followed the path, the scent of Christopher McNabb instead of Khalid when they went down that path? Absolutely. <clears throat> now, Mr. McNabb was arrested on the 8th after Khalil was arrested on the 7th. That was due to a probation warrant, is that correct? That's correct. Um, he did not have an active probation warrant on the 7th of October. He did not. Uh, you actually, you or someone in your department actually called the probation department and asked them to take a warrant so that you could arrest Mr. McNabb. I, I did not make that call, so I can't speak on it. Are you aware that somebody in your department did something? Do you believe that somebody in your department did something? Um, I would imagine yes. You would imagine yes? I would imagine somebody made the probation department aware of it. Yes. So he was. According to it's my understanding also that the I think it's part of the county probation office had been looking for him anyway because he missed at least one one appointment with him. Right. The probation warrant was for that Mr. Porter. Um, I have to see the actual one on there. Now you said at one point you guys decided not to go back to the trailer and look for a crime scene because it had been torn up and it just didn't seem like a good place to find evidence. Is that fair? Yes. If you would have found, if you would have put the fingerprints, if you would have tried to take fingerprints like on those coats uh, or on the doorknob, and you would have found a lot of fingerprints that didn't belong there. In other words, it wasn't somebody who was family, and it wasn't somebody who, uh, uh, from law enforcement. That would have been helpful in your investigation, would it not? Well, I'm not a fingerprint expert. I um, have a couple of kitchens, I think you pretty well on that. Um, I know plastic coats are unable to lift the prints off of that, and I can't, I can't remember ever in the case of the word doorknob to a mobile home being fingerprinted due to the use of the doorknob. Okay. If you would have found a stranger's fingerprint anywhere in the house, that would have been helpful to your investigation, is that right? We could have found out who the stranger was if they had been. Right, and I talked to the investigator Kitchens about an escapement of uh, in I don't have any evidence that there is an escapement with inmate. I'm just saying if there was a stranger's fingerprint that you could identify, if there was somebody who had a record or somebody who was in a mental institution and had escaped, um, that would be important for your investigation, right? If you would have had all of that information um, and all of that would have been true, yes, in the perfect world, that would have been helpful. When you were at the autopsy um, where the various Things that were wrapped around the child were taken off. Yes. Were those items ever taken and, and to identify blood or semen? Were they submitted to the GBI for blood or semen? Um, I, I'm not sure. As Investigator Kitchen says, 
he doesn't usually do things unless you ask him to. So do you recall asking him to do so? I, I, don't, I don't recall. No. I, I wouldn't have thought to ask for a senior search. And when I say that, I, those are the two things that I think of when you can get DNA from. So, um, you know, take out semen. Um, were you able to identify all those clothes that she wrapped in? Were you able to identify whether it was just her blood or just some, uh, somebody else's blood as well? No, no. And that's because the GBI wasn't asked to test it. Well, it did take some from the point, my understanding. Uh, two weeks ago. Um, yes.
along the lines of you know, let's see if anything comes out. Because I think you can argue that something did. Um, I don't even think any real use came out, but I mean, to answer your question, do we sometimes do that? Sure, we do that sometimes. Um, and would we have used anything that had come out? Absolutely. Well, would you agree that my clients seem to have caught on to the uh, past tense use of I love? I loved her, she was my baby. Sure. I love, I love her. She was my baby. Mr. McMahon himself 
that he walked through the woods and all that. That would, that would not have been the initial initial traffic problem. That's all I've got. Thank you very much, sir. Well, Investigator Alexander, setting aside whether Shane Kitt actually has a felony conviction or not, since there was no evidence of that, um, would it be fair to say that the couple, Mr. McNabb and Ms. Bell, associate with a lot of people who have criminal histories? Yes. Uh, so if a criminal history or even a felony conviction was a qualifying criteria to make you a person of interest in this case, how long would your list of people need to be to rule out? We would still be doing the investigation and interviews at this point. Uh, does Mr. McNabb talk to you about that in that last interview about how many people he was bringing in and out of the trailer of an unsavory lifestyle doing drugs? Yes. Does, does Mr. McNabb in fact attribute that ultimately their use of methamphetamines was a contributing factor to their child's death? He absolutely did. And with respect to that, was he referring to uh, other individuals that they brought around their trailer to get d drugs? Yes. The person that he mentioned um, that had come to the trailer to get uh, to provide dope for Courtney on the night before Raby Kalia went missing, um, was supposed to be coming there to deliver drugs. Is that fair to say? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to object to leading. The last five questions he's answered have all been yes questions. I'd ask that she direct the witness. I think the last question was leading, Judge, but just because the questions are yes questions doesn't mean that they're leading. Don't he lead. hasn't objected to those. Don't lead your witness. Now, what was Mr. McNabb doing at Skittles or Sarah's house? Remember um, in the statement where he indicates that he goes down the path and he makes a right on Henderson Mill, not a left back towards 36, Correct. but a right a quarter of a mile to go down to Sarah's residence. Do you have, did he ever indicate to you why he was going down to his friend's house? He never indicated why other than the fact that she lived there and he went to stand in her driveway and then he came back. Was he suspicious that whoever kidnapped his child had gone to his friend Skittles' house? He never, never mentioned that, no. And with respect to these totes that were um, stacked up there in the bedroom next to where the baby was lying, um, were you aware of whether or not there were um, other individuals who were inside tearing that tote, those totes apart before you arrived, looking for clothing, looking for the baby? Yes, several deputies had already done that by the time I had gotten there. Do you imagine that um, if there were prints on that container, there would be um, just a few or many? I would imagine many, yes. Is there any evidence of any escaped mental patient that you came across in your investigation? Actually, there was no evidence of that at all. Um, is there an active investigation into uh, escapees from a mental asylum here located somewhere within miles of Newton County? Uh, no, none at all. Now, do you recall what Courtney Bell said that she took off of uh, Clarissa the night before baby Kalia went missing, before she put her to bed? Took off Clarissa, yes, yeah, she took off a blue t-shirt that had gotten some milk on the collar in the back. Okay, um, and do you recall what Courtney Bell said uh, Chris McNabb was wearing um, in the trailer on the evening of the 6th prior to them having sex on the couch? Yes, he had on some blue camouflage shorts. And when you say shorts, were those boxer shorts? Boxers, yes ma'am. And did you find blue camouflage boxer shorts inside of the drawstring bag with baby Kalia? We did. And did Mr. McNabb tell you what brand of underwear he was wearing? So they were U.S. Polo, the U.S. Polo brand. And what type of brand are these blue camouflage boxer shorts? They are U.S. Polo brand. Did Mr. McNabb own up to having a camouflage t-shirt? Yes. Was there a camouflage t-shirt found inside of the bag there with baby Kalia? There was. When uh, Courtney Bell was talking about the blue camouflage shorts, did she talk about a specific thing that she remembered doing that night that, that enabled her to recall the color of the shorts? Yes. What she, was that? She said that as he, walked, as he walked by, she grabbed or smacked his booty. Now, did Mr. Um, McNabb admit that this was his bag? He did. Did Courtney Bell describe this as being the bag, the, again, drawstring bag with the Michael Jordan uh, symbol on it? Yep. 
let me go back. They, they, they never saw the bag, but they did describe the bag perfectly. Right, and so in that final interview, Mr. McNabb is aware that this is a bag that his child has, has now been found in. Is that yes, correct? that's correct. Okay. Um, and so at this point in time, when we're talking about searching or testing these items that were found inside of the bag to determine, again, whose DNA might be on these items, um, if there was blood on these items, whose blood would you believe it to be? I would believe it to be the baby Kalia's blood. Have you ever heard of a case, a worked case, where a 14-day-old child or 15-day-old child is capable of inflicting injuries and drawing <coughs> blood on another individual? No. Is there any obvious signs of injury on Christopher McNabb's hands when you interviewed him on the 7th as opposed to when you interviewed him on the 8th? On the 7th, there was nothing obvious. On the 8th, he did have obvious injuries to his hand from punching the wall according to what he said. And that would be the wall in? In his mobile home, in the trailer where they lived. Now, in this last statement that he gives you, he starts talking about blood being on, um, he noticed blood on the little baby sleeper, and he also just noticed he, that he happened to have a cut on his hand at that time. Is that anything, where is this ever mentioned in either of his first two interviews that he gave you on October the 7th or on October the 8th? It's not mentioned at all until the final interview. Is it possible that Mr. McNabb was trying to offer an explanation as to why? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. She said, is it possible Mr. McNabb was trying to do something he doesn't know? Wait till she asked the question, Mr. Carr, because I have no idea what she's asking. Ask whatever question you're going to ask, and then I'll listen to whatever. Did Mr. McNabb um, ever tell you about having any injury or cuts to his hands in the first interview? No. Did Mr. McNabb ever talk to you or suggest that y'all needed to go get the baby sleeper because there was a spot of blood on it in the first or the second interview? He did not. Now, with respect to um, Matthew Lester, did you, are you aware that Matthew Lester was, was uh, an inmate at the Douglas County Sheriff's Office Jail from October the 2nd of 2017 until October the 17th of 2017. I am aware now, yes. You know, at this time I'd offer a certified copy of uh, booking records from the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. This is State's Exhibit number 71 um, for Matthew Shane Lester indicating dates of incarceration from October 2nd, 2017 until October the 7th, 17th of 2017. No Submitted without objection. Would it therefore have been possible for Matthew Lester to have broken into the residence and stolen baby Kalia and killed her and left her in the woods? No, it would not have been. Those are all the questions that I have, Judge. Mr. Carr? Thank you, Judge. Uh, Investigator Alexander. Um, Christopher McNabb did admit that bag or a bag very similar to that was his, right? Yes. Um, and you asked him about the underwear. He said, yeah, if those underwear were in that bag, those are probably mine. Yes. And uh, you asked him about a camouflage shirt. Yes. And he said, yeah, I, we bought a camouflage shirt. I don't know where it was. I, didn't, I haven't worn it lately, but it was probably in that bin. Is That's that right? Yes. So he never denied that any of this stuff was his. In fact, he said, wow, I know that makes it look suspicious, didn't he? That's correct. He told you that doesn't mean that he did it. Is that fair? He did say that, yes. Right. Now, Ms. Zahn asked you, did you check back on all of these rumors? And you said yes. Um, what exactly did you do to check back on all the, the rumors? What did you do to check on Shane Kidd to make sure that he hadn't committed this crime? I, I did not check on Shane Kidd. We're not just going to rehash what you asked the first time. You may cross on what she brought up, but we're just not going to say it again. All right. Matt Lester, clearly he was in, in jail at the time Kalia went missing. Is that right? right? That's correct. Um, you did not learn that until I told you a few minutes ago. Well, that, actually, that's not true. I didn't remember until just then, yes. That's so all I have, Judge. Mr. Frost? Mr. Zahn. Ms. Zahn. You may step in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's 
5.30. We're going to recess for the weekend. Now, I can't emphasize enough what I've already emphasized and told you. Over this weekend, don't let anybody talk to you about this case. If you all have spouses who are watching, don't let them talk to you about what they've seen in your experience. Uh, don't read anything. Don't go on any social media. Uh, what else do I tell you? Don't look on the television for anything on news. Uh, and, and I do want to emphasize, when I say don't read newspapers, I'm not against newspapers. You're welcome to read it. we got an excellent newspaper here, and you're welcome to read it when it's not this case. And the AJC is an excellent paper. So I just don't want you reading it about this case. So is that clear to everybody? So if you leave all your notes here, we'll, re we'll reconvene at 9 o'clock on Monday morning. We'll see you then. Have a good weekend.